Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a crowd. Wow. <laughs> How many of y'all glad you're in church tonight? Oh, yeah. Amen. Would anybody rather be in the hospital? <laughs> I didn't think so. Well, I want to welcome you to Cowboys for Jesus again on a Wednesday night. You're going to hear a great sermon from Pastor Dennis tonight. And you folks that are out in front of your TV set streaming and listening to us, we love you. We're glad you're tuned in. And uh, one of these days, we'd like to see you in our audience. We're still <laughs> spacing out right, and we still got room. So if y'all feel like coming in, come on. Amen. Amen. So are y'all ready to worship? We got one that's really enthusiastic here. I'm going to ask again. Uh, are y'all ready to worship? Amen. That's much better. Amen. Thank, thank you, Jen. All right. So let's pray and let's get the Holy Spirit involved in this thing. You want to? Well, Father, we just thank you for a great day. We thank you for a, a great bunch of folks that you've brought in and that are watching uh, in their homes, Father. And Lord, we just ask you to to just stir us up with the Holy Spirit tonight. Holy Spirit, just come and inhabit our praise and, and stir our, our, our soul, Father, and, and just, just pour yourself out on us tonight so that we, we know when we left here that we've been in your presence, Father. And I just ask you to anoint Dennis and, and give him a double or triple proportion of your, your uh, anointing tonight. And, and Lord, just anoint our worship team and let them... Let them lead us into the pearly gates, Father. We just want to worship you tonight. We want to hear your voice, and we want to hear your word, Father. So thank you, and, and just bless us tonight, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, pour your spirit out on us. Just lift your hands and receive as I sing this first part of this song like a prayer over you. Oh, let the sun With his spirit and his love, let him fill your life and satisfy your soul.
us up, oh Lord. Hallelujah, we sing praises to your name. Oh, we give you glory. You are worthy of all praise. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts, in our service, in our midst this evening.
worship, all praise. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh Lord, you're beautiful. And your face is all I see. Oh, in your eyes, a homeless child, your grace abounds to me. 
Spirit, for your sweet presence here. Hallelujah. Thank Why don't you help me make welcome Brother Dennis Keyes. Hallelujah. Isn't it fun to be in the presence of the Lord? Woo! Glory to God. Well, welcome to Cowboys for Jesus on Wednesday night. For everyone that's here and uh, for those that are watching. And uh, we are so glad that you are, are here and that you are there uh, online with us. Uh, before I get started tonight, uh, we have a couple of uh, special prayer requests. Uh, probably several different people know uh, Dwayne and Cindy Boothay that uh, uh, used to be regular members here. Dwayne had to have a surgery and he's developed some complications, had to go back into the hospital. So we want to pray for him. And then uh, Noah Borland, uh, Susan Borland, our soundboard lady, uh, uh, son is having to have some uh, an operation and some surgery, so we want to p pray for him. So, is there anybody here in the audience uh, that needs prayer, special prayer about something? Okay, would would some people around, uh, uh, even with social distancing, we're going to stretch out our hands? Let's do that. We'll stretch out our hands and and touch them. Do you, would you care to share what it is, or do you want to keep it to yourself? Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, let's, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. I heard the surgery was successful, but we'll pray for the pain then. All right, let's go to the... Oh, excuse me. Go ahead, Carl. That's right. Welcome back, Bob. We're glad to. He, he's been out traveling, and he is a member here, but comes and goes. So we, we're glad that you're back. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. If you're anywhere close, stretch out your hands to those that have requested prayer. Yes. We'll lift up all of these needs. You know, we serve an awesome God, and there is nothing too dis difficult for Him. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. So all of these sicknesses, these pains, the suffering has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. So let's take our prayers to Him at this time. It says, where two or three are agreed touching anything, that it shall be done them according to our Father who is in heaven. And Father God, we come together as more than just two, Lord. We set ourselves in agreement, Heavenly Father, with all of these physical and emotional needs that are here, dear Lord. You've heard them voice, dear Lord. Father, uh, uh, for Dwayne and for Noah, dear Lord, for the 
son-in-law, dear Lord, for uh, skips me, but Sherry's husband, uh, Lord, for these ladies, dear Father, for the friend, Heavenly Father, up in Michigan, dear Lord God, for Bob and his back, dear Lord. Father, we lift these needs up to you in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. Father, nothing is too difficult for you. You've told us to come boldly to the throne of grace. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come into our Abba Father, and we say, Father God, thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for the healing of these bodies, for the healing of our mind and our emotions, dear Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Nothing's too difficult for you. Thank you, dear Lord, that we can come to you and we know that we have our requests answered because we pray according to your word, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise, we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I started a series Sunday um, spirit, soul, and body. And uh, just to give a quick little refresher, the main verse that we're kind of using for this whole series, uh, tonight I'm going to speak on the spirit, Sunday I'm going to speak on uh, the soul, and next Wednesday I'll finish by speaking on the body. And uh, might or might not have a summary, just depending on how time goes with everything. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Now may the God of peace, our Father God is a God of peace. If you're not in peace, go to God because He's got the peace for us. He is our God of peace. Himself sanctify you completely. Nothing left out but your whole being. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come back not for a broken down church, not for a broken down uh, uh, child, but he's coming back for a victorious church. He's coming back for a church that is an overcoming church in the world that is a light and that is, a, is a, the brightness of his appearance. And he that's what he's coming back for. So I'm hoping that this series will help you. It helped me when I understood at least to where this old East Texas country boy could understand it. And I figure if I can understand it, anybody can. But if, if, when I understood the truth in the, in the message of spirit, soul, and body, it set me free. It helped me to move forward, to not get stuck with guilt and condemnation and all kinds of other stuff going on, but to be able to move forward with the Lord. And so that's what my goal is for you that you'll grab hold of this. Uh, we know that in Genesis 1, that God created man in his image, in his likeness. He created them to rule, to reign, and to have dominion upon the earth. God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so we are created in the image and likeness of God. We are spirit. Say, I'm a spirit. We are a spirit just like God. Adam and Eve had God's spirit on the inside of them. But they listened to the lies of the devil. And they disregarded the truth of God and his word. He said, I'm creating them in my likeness and image. The devil says, well, if you really want to be like God, you got to eat of the fruit that he told you not to eat of. And they gave in and they listened to it. And what they did is they gave their authority, their power over to him by ignoring God and listening to his lies. And when they did, he said, God said, in the day that you eat that fruit, you shall die. Well, we know that they lived for hundreds of years after that, physically, right? We know that their mind, their will, their emotions, their soulish area continued to live. So what died? Their spirit died. Their spirit man died. It had separation from God. God had to kick them out of the garden 
He put an angel there to guard the, the way so that they couldn't come back. I mean, can you imagine? All of humankind is born into that spiritual death. Separation from God. That's why, just like they started living according to the natural five natural senses of their body. They put body first. Come on now. They gave into the flesh. And the spirit took a back seat because it's dead. We're born into the world. Did you know you don't have to teach kids to be selfish? Mine. Mine. Come on. I mean, the littlest toddler, as soon as they learn to talk, it's mine. Did you know you don't have to teach them to throw a temper, temper tantrum? Huh? Why? Because they are ruled by their body and not by their spirit. Are you with me? Romans 5 and verse 12. Helps us to, to, to see this, I hope. Therefore, just as one man sin entered the world. We're talking about Adam and Eve. Remember he said we, we're going to make man in our image, but he was talking about Adam and Eve. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and this death spread to all men because all have sinned. The Bible says in another place in Romans, it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's the way, that's our state. It, the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's easy to understand that we're sinners. <coughs> Excuse me. But it didn't end there. Romans 5 and verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. You see, God so loved the world that he said, I can't leave man like this. I can't leave him in this condition. I have to find a solution, but I have to find one that's legal because I can't just come in and change man into what I want him to be. Because I gave him authority on the earth and he gave it away to Satan. So I've got to somehow come in as a human and gain that back so I can give it back to man. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe, that's faith, in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him would be saved, delivered, set free. And as that verse says, so that they could have life and rule and reign in this earth. You see, He gave not only their spiritual birth back, because in John 3, 6 it says, you must be born again. Well, what's it talking about? Nicodemus said, you mean i got to go back physically into my, my parents or my mom's womb? No. We're talking about spirit. So when you're born again, you're born again in your spirit. Your body doesn't change. I know that's a big surprise, right? I mean, how, you know, all of a sudden because you accepted Jesus, you didn't become a movie star or something like that. You go home and look in the mirror, it's the same old you, right? You still got that stinking thinking going on in your mind. Come on now. I'm telling you the truth. What changed? The inside. Man, I felt all clean inside. It was like I was born again. I became a new creature. You see, that's what happens with us. We still have those thoughts, the soulish area. We still have the desires of the flesh. Come on. Piece of chocolate pie still looks good. But the thing is, we're changed on the inside. It's our spirit man that is born again. And it makes it so clear when you understand that your flesh doesn't change. Your thinking, your mind, your will, your emotions, your conscience is still the same. But that your spirit man is completely new. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, being in Christ means that you've accepted him 
and you have identified with his death on the cross. You've identified with him going down to hell and paying the debt for you because it says the wages of sin is death. And Christ died for me and for you. That's what we believe. In, in Romans it says, if you'll believe with the heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with salvation, or, and with confession and salvation is made, or, or confession is made unto salvation. <laughs> Thank you. I get, my mind's going faster than my tongue can keep up with. But what I want you to see, folks, is that it's because of Christ And so when we are in Christ, you're saying, I identify with him. The water baptism is identification with his burial, his death, and his resurrection. When he rose from the dead, all debts was paid. I said, all debts for your sin, for your sickness, for your deliverance, for your mental health, for your prosperity. Come on. If it's lacking... John 10.10 says it this way, the devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come, Jesus said, to give you life and life in abundance. We serve a good God, a God of peace that wants you to walk with him, walk in dominion, to rule and to reign upon this earth. So how do we do that? By acknowledging our spirit man, that we're no longer the same. We are a new creature. Old things have passed away. You say, well, not all things have passed away. Well, because we're talking about our spirit. When you are born again, you have the spirit of God that comes in and dwells on the inside of you. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Boy, I'm getting ahead of myself. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That's the way we're born, folks. That we should not trust in ourselves. You can't do it by works. I don't care how good you think you are. Man, I used to witness some people at work and they said, well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a great guy. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't run around. You know, I don't smoke. I don't chew. I don't go with girls that do. I mean, you know, he, he had all these excuses of how great he was. But when you compare him to God, it falls short. You cannot do it through works. And you cannot trust in yourself, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he does deliver. I want you to see that. Who delivered. Is that past tense or is that present tense? Past. He's already delivered us. This is important. This lay in the groundwork box. He delivered us from so great a death. He does deliver us. Did you know your salvation doesn't stop? Huh? Come on. It keeps going right now. You say, oh, well, you know, all my sins were forgiven in the past. Come on now. I've heard all kinds of people preach. Yeah, your sins are forgiven when you accept Jesus Christ, but you better watch out right now. Come on. But what does it say? And does deliver. Is that present, past, or future? That's not a hard question, folks. If he does, that means he's doing it right now. That's present tense. So my God is still delivering me right now. Are you with me? And in whom we trust that he what? Will. Is that future, past, or present? Future. Future. You ought to get excited with that. Because we are delivered in the past. We're delivered today and I'm going to be delivered tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I'll probably mess up. A bunch of holy rollers out there don't, but some of us know what we're talking about. Romans 8, verse 10. It says, and if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So it's your spirit that's alive. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does he dwell in you? Yes. He dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You are full of the life of God. In your mortal body. It said, it said, you know, 
I mean, it's throughout the whole Bible. But he's put treasures in clay vessels. Precious treasures in clay vessels. That's, that's what he's talking about. The Spirit of God is on the inside of you. I'm, I want you to get that down. The Spirit of God. The pure, holy Spirit of God. Did you know that no sin is in your spirit? Come on now, listen to me. You can have no sin in your spirit because God cannot dwell in sin. Sin cannot dwell in God. Huh? So if the Spirit of God dwells in you, in your spirit, man, I'm not talking about the flesh. Come on, I'm not talking about your, your thinking. I'm talking about your spirit, man. You are holy. That's why the Bible says, Be ye holy as I am holy. God is a spirit and we are a spirit. Say, I'm a spirit. I live in a body. And I have a soul. My spirit has no sin in it. I mean, you need to get excited about that. I am. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So what is it talking about here? It's saying your old body is one day going to die. Did you know that? I hate to tell you that. Even you young people. One day that body's going to die. It's going to return dust to dust. But I tell you what, that new man inside of me, it just gets better and better each day. It, it better and better each day. It says in, in, in John 6, 63, it, it says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When you open your Bible, when you read your Bible, that Word of God comes inside and your spirit is renewed and built up. It's like... Uh, uh, feeding a tiger. It just gets stronger and stronger and the more you feed it. Amen? But, if you feed your flesh more than you feed your Bible, I mean your spirit with the Bible, who do you think's going to get strong? Coming to church on Sunday, folks, and I'm speaking to somebody out there, coming to church just on Sunday ain't going to cut it. What you get on Sunday, you need to take with you all week long. I don't know about you, but I eat more than just on Sunday. Huh? Come on. There's some of you eating two or three times on Sunday. But what I, what I want you to see is we have to feed our spirit man because he is renewed with every word of God. Amen? First Corinthians 6 and, 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 and verse 17 says that we are one spirit with the Lord. We are one spirit with the Lord. I want you to grab hold. You need to think on that. You're not only born again of the spirit, but you are one spirit with him. When you go, he goes. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's with you always. You're one spirit with the Lord. First, First Corinthians 2, 9. Yes. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Do you love the Lord? I said, do you love the Lord? Well then, do you see what the Word of God says? Eye hadn't seen it yet. Ear hadn't even heard about it. They're talking about the five senses. Did you know that what God has for you, you can't understand through your five senses? Huh? I'm talking about you can't see it. Do you know the things of God are unseen and eternal? The things that we see are temporary and change, subject to change. But it says 
the things that I have written for you, the things that I have prepared for you, have not even begun to enter into your thinking. The things that God has prepared for you. He's got great plans for you. Next verse, 10. But God has revealed them to us. I said, God has revealed them to us. The great things that He has plans for you, He has revealed them to you, Tom. He's revealed them to you, Susie. He has revealed the great things that He has planned for you. How? Through His Spirit. For the Spirit knows all the things. Yes, even the deep things of God. The Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of you. It's on the inside of you. What He has planned for you, His future that He has for you, is in your spirit man, even right now. Well, how do you draw that out? By calling on the Spirit. See, the, did you know the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is probably left out of more churches than, than you can even begin to consider. Oh, it's great to talk about God, and it's good to use the name of Jesus. But where's the Holy Ghost? He's on the inside. He is God in the earth today. I don't know about you, but my Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Huh? Where are they? They're in heaven. What have they done? God the Father sent the Holy Ghost down through His Son, Jesus Christ, to dwell on the inside of each and every one of us. So that same power that raised Christ from the dead, the power that can overcome the devil, the power that defeated Him in, the, in hell itself, has given new life to us and dwells in this mortal body. And in your mortal body. And your mind and your emotions can't grasp that. Why? Because it's in the physical realm, see? Your mind is, your emotions. Your body can't grasp that. Why? Because it, the Holy Spirit is not something you can touch. But your spirit man, see, spirit speaks to spirit. Spiritual things are learned by the spirit. Yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man? Do you know there's things I know on the inside of me that only I know? I've been married to my wife almost 53 years and she knows a lot, but there's stuff on the inside of me she doesn't know and there's stuff on the inside of her I don't know. It's probably good I don't. Come on. Somebody punch your spouse and say, talking about you. <laughs> no, but I'm, the, the Spirit knows and God knows because He is my Spirit. It's born again of God. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Oh, well then we can't really understand God. No, we've got the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God that's in our spirit knows the things of God. So instead of saying, well, man, I just can't figure God out. I have no idea what He's going to do next. Say, Lord, speak to my spirit. Show me where to go. See, did you know that the Holy Spirit is our guide? It says in John that the Holy Spirit is sent to be our guide. I don't know about you, but when I follow a guide, I know where he's going. I might not know where he's going, but I know where I'm going, and I'm following him. Are you with me? You got headlights on your car. You might not know, you might not be able to see the destination you're headed to. Come on now, stay with me. But you can see far enough to the end of your headlights. And what do you do? You quit driving because you don't know what the destination is yet? You hadn't seen it yet? Huh? You keep going. You go the distance that your headlights show. Huh? That's following God. He said, just stay with me one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. The birds of the sky, they don't worry. They let me take care of them today. Do you know He will take care of you this evening? He'll take care of you in the morning. He'll take care of you tomorrow, but don't worry about it. Just go the distance of the headlights. That's good preaching, Brother Dennis. Verse 11, or 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. See, we know the things of God through the Holy Spirit. 
through your word, as you read the Bible, did you know it'll come alive to you if you'll just let the Holy Spirit guide you in it? Wow. 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. Do you know the natural man can't understand that? They think foolish, uh, preaching is foolishness. Come on, you talk to the average person. What? That guy's a looney tune up there saying those kind of things. If I can't see it, feel it, touch it, smell it, taste it, I don't believe it. Huh? Does that sound like Thomas? Come on. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. The only way you're going to get anything in the Spirit is through the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit who gives us life. The body profits nothing. But the words that I speak to you, they are Spirit. And they are life. Philemon 1 and verse 6. But the sharing of your faith, but that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. What does acknowledgement mean? This is your quiz for the night, by the way. What's acknowledgement mean? You know, you, you acknowledge, somebody walks in the room, you acknowledge them. You, you recognize their presence, right? So it, what does it mean then if it says by the, uh, uh, it, that your faith, we're talking about spiritual things, that your faith may become effective. Effective means that it's, it can do it. And it's effective. It does it correctly. By the acknowledgement of what? Every good thing, which is where? Where? Oh. So then quit saying, well, I don't know. No, I know all things in the Spirit. I have the mind of Christ. I have the wisdom of God. That's what the Bible says. Quit saying, well, I, can't, I, I don't know if I can do that. I can't do that. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say, oh man, I, I just miss. God, I sure hope God will forgive me about this. Huh? Come on. No. You don't say something like that. You say, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Did you know that the word confession means to say the same thing as? Huh? So when I mess up, I turn to the Lord and I say, Father, I repent. I'm sorry. I thank you. Come on now, you say the same thing God said. I thank you that you forgive me of all of my sins. So I'm not going to be in the mully grubs. That's all depressed. Because see, the first thing you do, when you do something wrong, the devil will come right to you. See, you just thought you were a Christian. You just thought you could be goody two shoes. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. Man, you better not show up at church. Everybody in the world will know about that. Huh? He'll put guilt, condemnation. But what do you do? I said, no, sir. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Praise God, I'm going forward with the Lord. When you acknowledge that, when you say the same thing that God says, what are you doing? You're acknowledging the good things in you. Would you repeat this confession with me, please? I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus. I am more than a conqueror through Him who has delivered me. I'm delivered from the power of darkness. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I have the blessings of Abraham. I am prosperous. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. Jesus became poor 
that I could be rich. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Glory to God. I have the mind of Christ. I have the wisdom of God. The fullness of God dwells in my mortal body because the Holy Spirit lives in my spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel better. That's what it means to acknowledge the good things that are in you. Quit speaking words of doubt. Quit speaking words of disbelief. Quit comparing yourselves to somebody else. But look at what God has done for you and in you and with you. Acknowledge the good things of God. Amen? Ephesians 1 and verse 18. Ephesians 1 and verse 18. The, I, this is Paul's prayer for the people in, in Ephesus. And we can take this, I don't know about you, but at the first of the year, at the first couple of Sundays or, or services in, in January, I talked about prayer and I went over five prayers that uh, Paul prayed for the church. And they apply to us because we are part of God's church. And this is Paul praying. He says that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling, God's calling on you. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? I mean, He's poured all of Himself into us as saints. That's exciting. Next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness, the greatness of God's power, the same power that raised Jesus from death? I'm going to say that over and over until it gets down in your spirit. But if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that went down into the pits of hell and conquered the devil and rose Jesus from the dead because the price had been paid. If that same spirit, that powerful, that great, exceeding great power of God that could do that, that lives on the inside of you, watch out world. I mean, the devil ought to say in the morning, Woo, look out, those cowboys for Jesus are awake. What are they going to do to me now? Come on. The exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe. Do you believe? See, it has to be by faith. We are saved by grace through faith. For those who believe according to the working of His mighty power. He gives us the power. He gives us the faith. Do you know the Bible says it's given unto us the measure of faith? For whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever mental struggles that you're dealing with, whatever physical things are going on in your body, He's given you the faith, the measure of faith that you need to be victorious in that situation. All we got to do is find it in the Bible. You find chapter and verse and you go to the Lord and you say, Lord, your word says in Isaiah 53 that by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. And then you compare that with anything else you want to, but it takes second place to the word of God. Why? Because that's what gives life to my spirit. And when that word gets in, you say, well, I don't feel. Well, wait a minute. What part is feeling? Huh? Huh? Is that your spirit? Is that your mind? It's your what? It's your body. Huh? Come on now. I'm going to talk about that next week. Next Wednesday, we're going to talk about the body. But what I want you to see that in your spirit, you were healed. You have health and healing in your spirit. All you have to do is believe God's word and draw it out of that new man that's in you and let it manifest in your body. It all has to go, it goes from your spirit through your thinking, come on, through your soul, and affects the body. See, natural man, their, whatever their body desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's what I'm talking about. It goes from the body through the soul and gets down in their spirit. But see, God reversed all that with Jesus. 
And so now spirit takes predominance. You can be a Christian and you can go to heaven, but you can live like hell on this earth. Come on now, I'm telling you. That's good preaching. Because why? Because you're ignoring your spirit and you're still living by your flesh. We're going to talk about that Sunday. Where was I? 19. I've got to find where I am in my notes. 19. Uh, uh, which he worked in Christ. God did all this through Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21. Above all. Above what? What? Does all mean all? Does, it, is it, does all not mean some of it? All means all, right? So Jesus is seated above all principalities, powers, mights, dominions, and every name that is named. Not only in the now, nasty now, now as my mama used to say. Not only in the now, this age, but also in that which is to come. See, he is God of eternity. He has all power in eternity. Now go on, keep that thought in mind, verse 22. And he put all things under his feet. So where is all the devil and his demons and the dominion and the powers of darkness and all of that? Where is it? It's under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the what? Who's the church? Who? Oh, wait a minute now. It said that he put all these things under his feet and he gave Christ to be the head over the church, the believers, which is his body. Say, I am the body of Christ. See, you're the body of Christ individually. We are the body of Christ jointly in unity. Come on. The fullness of him who fills all in all. The fullness of God dwells in cowboys for Jesus' body to everyone that will believe. Right? Okay, so if he's the head and we are the body, where is the devil? Under your feet? Under my feet? You mean we have authority over the devil? When are we going to start exercising it? Huh? Wow. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. Skipping way down. Running out of time. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has those plans for you, those plans that you can't even dream of. And he says, I prepared them long before you were even born, when you were even just a twinkle in your daddy's eye. Come on now. He said, I had plans for you. And he says, I've given you all that you need to accomplish them and to carry them out because you are my workmanship. You're not a mistake. You were created by God for that special purpose. And only you can fulfill it. And he's given it all to you, and it's going to be good. He's not going to ask you to do something that isn't good for you. If he asks you to do it, it's going to be good. Can I get an amen? amen. John 7 and verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. The life of God is coming out of you if you'll just share it with somebody. If you'll let the Holy Spirit work in you, let the Holy Spirit out of you to minister to somebody else. Don't you love fresh spring water? Huh? Isn't it better than some old cesspool tank that's got no flow to it? Well, that's what people are looking for. They're looking for life. They're looking for living water. And you are the living water that they need to look for. Amen? John 14 and verse 12. Are y'all getting anything out of this? John 14 and verse 12. 
says, most assuredly, this is Jesus speaking, I say to you, Jesus is talking to you tonight. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, in other words, has faith in Jesus Christ, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, or he will do, because I go to my Father. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. And there is nothing impossible for you. You can do it. You can do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. You lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You tell them that there's freedom in Jesus Christ and they'll be set free. You deliver those demons. You say, demon, get out of him in Jesus' name. Demon, get out of her. Depression, you go from that mind. Come on now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm a spirit. I'm born of God's spirit. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm created for good works. Greater works than Jesus did. You know Peter walked by and people were healed in his shadow. And Jesus never did have someone healed from his shadow that we know of. Come on. Just think of what we can do with the internet, with all kinds of other things going on that God's given us. Well, I hope you got something out of that. You better believe that you are the Spirit of God living on the inside. And take it out. Let's close with a word of prayer tonight. Father God, we just praise you and thank you, dear Lord, for your word. I thank you that it is life to those that found it. I found your word tonight, dear Lord, and I'm going to live it. I'm going to believe you for it. And I'm going to see the victory, not only in my life, but flowing out of my life so I can touch the lives of others all around me. Thank you, dear Lord, that you said you send your word and it accomplishes what you sent it forth to do in those that will hear it and believe it. So, Father, I thank you that as your word put forth tonight that we'll see a change in people's lives from this night forward. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, agree with me and say, Amen. 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 Pastor Jerry? You know, I, I prayed for Pastor Dennis when I prayed starting up. And I think I prayed for a triple anointing on him. And I apologize to y'all. I, I, guess, I guess I should have prayed for a quadruple. Maybe he would have gotten excited. Hello? That's a super, super message, Dennis. How many of y'all thought that was awesome? Amen. Well, I hope you folks out in streaming land got, got what he was preaching to. And next time I'll pray for a quadruple and we'll just see what happens. He might take off. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's close in prayer. Father, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for the love of your, your love, Father. And Lord, I thank you that, that you love us, that, that you've forgiven us of all of our sins and that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Father. No matter what anybody says, no matter what the devil says, no matter nothing, Father, you love us and we're set free and we got to know it and we got to learn it, Father. So, Lord, thank you for that message tonight and help us to take it home and help us to go over those scriptures and get them in our spirit, Father, so that, so that we've got it all the time and we can always... Uh, call on you, Father, and we can crawl up in your lap when things go wrong instead of running away from you. So thank you for that message, and thank you for all that you're doing in our body. And we just praise you and, and give you thanks, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. How you know when you've been to a cowboy church? He finally learned how to do that, man. Amen. So y'all going to come back now? When? All right. Be here. Be here. Amen?